Well, fish is not the only thing you eat up here. There's plenty of game as well. And I've got my hands on a beautiful moose fillet. This one's quite big as well, so this was, this was a big daddy in the forest. And to go with that, I've got some fresh chanterelles that I've got right here. And I've got some dried ones as well. The water's evaporated and what you're left with is just focused flavor. Absolutely perfect. And with this, I've got some beautiful cloudberries, fresh lingonberries, and I have a wild herb over here that I think is rather special. This one is called meadowsweet. It's like bitter almonds. It's actually cumarine, the scent that you get from this. I will use this to flavor the um, cloudberries with it. But we need to start with the meat. Now I want to cut them into really nice and big, juicy serving sizes. So I will cut it like that. It's beautiful, it's nice and thick. I've kept it about five centimeters. That's a good size. Done. These cloudberries are very, very nice, as they are, of course. But it would be really nice, I think, to have sort of a lightly pickled version of the cloudberries with this dish. So I'm just going to put the flowers in here and then pour some sugar over it, just normal sugar, about two tablespoons of sugar. We've got some white wine vinegar here, and I'm using roughly the same amount as the sugar, so about two tablespoons of white wine vinegar, and then just a few drops of water. We'll just leave this for about 20 minutes, half an hour, and then we'll see what happens with it. Now, the rest of the dish is going to be quite easy to cook, but we need to prepare all of the ingredients. So these mushrooms, nice and fresh, break them down into smaller pieces, at least the big ones. And at the same time, when I break them, I just make sure that there are no unwanted visitors inside of the mushrooms. I think that's quite enough. So just peel and slice one onion and one clove of garlic as well. I've got a bit of fresh thyme here as well. Just going to chop that down and add that to the mushrooms. Now that there's a nice color on the meat, I'm just going to add some gin. This is a local gin as well. Really nice and clear. I like that juniper flavor, especially with game. So a few drops of that. There we go. So we set it on fire and we just wait for the flames to die out because then we know that the alcohol has evaporated and we're left with that beautiful juniper flavor there. Now, even though we've got an enormous amount of flavor here, I'm just going to take these dried mushrooms and crush them like this, pulverize them. And to this, we're going to add cream, nice, rich, heavy cream. And instead of adding red wine to this sauce, I have got my hands on just pressed lingonberries. This is just raw juice. I will use a few drops of that in there, a bit of water as well. That's it, really. All we need to do now is to wait for the sauce to thicken. I think the meat is just about perfect. It's rare to medium rare, and I'm just hoping that those cloudberries will be as magical as I'm hoping they will be. And it's nice, and I think you can, you can go and do something else and I'll just eat this. Can you recall the last time you spent a couple of days in nature? How good that felt and how you reconnected with yourself and nature on a deeper level? Well, that's how I feel right now. The High Coast really has something unique to offer. And when it comes to food here, well, the brilliant quality of the local produce that I've been able to sample here and the fact that you can enjoy traditional dishes and events such as a seal swimming party makes this the perfect destination for both travelers and food lovers. There we go. So whether you are looking for an adventure on the mountains, yes! in the forest, on the sea, or even a new culinary experience, the high coast of Sweden will have something for you. And there's always a new adventure to discover.